We're here with uh, Jaime Fernandez, who is the owner of the Instituto Allende and the former mayor of San Miguel, and um, uh, uh, and has been here. You were born here in San Miguel, weren't you? I was born in Guanajuato. In, in the city of Guanajuato? In the city of Guanajuato, uh, back in 1949. The same year that uh, my mother, Nell Harris, and Enrique Fernandez Martinez, my father, moved to San Miguel. They, I was born in May, they moved in December. Now, when did your mother um, meet your father? Uh, I don't know exactly when, but uh, it must have been like in the late 30s, uh, early 40s. Wow, she came down here that, or she was from Arkansas, right? Yes. Yeah, and uh, how on earth did she get to San Miguel? Well, uh, she met my father, well, my father was governor of the state of Guanajuato, and my mother was living with uh, my sister, Barbara, and her father in Irapuato. And my father was the governor and had a lot of things to do, a lot of things to do with, uh, with Irapuato as far as uh, uh, public works and the politics, and he had many, many friends. So uh, they met there in Irapuato, uh, later on, uh, uh, Barbara's father and my mother got a divorce, and my mother eventually uh, uh, married my father. So and Barbara's father, Barbara's father then is American. He was British. British. Yeah. Okay. They met in uh, the state of Mexico because my grandfather was living there. My grand, my mother's uh, father who was from Arkansas, was working for a lumber company in uh, El Oro, in the Estado de Mexico. Yeah, now this is all really interesting because, uh, because San Miguel, of course, wouldn't be what it is today if, you're, if your mother hadn't moved here uh, originally. I mean, she, she was such an important part of San Miguel back in the days when it was becoming San Miguel. My father, uh, my mother, Cosío del Pomar, and uh, Sterling Dickinson, they were the, the founders of the Instituto. My father bought the property uh, back in 1949, and it took a year or so to rebuild, to restore uh, the uh, original building that was uh, Dated from uh, the 1730s. And, uh, he he bought it in 1949. He bought it in 1949. The year you were born. And then uh, together with uh, other people from San Miguel, Luis Briviesca, Lucha Mojica, of course uh, Jose Mojica, who was very very important in the uh, art movement and the uh, uh, rebirth of San Miguel, let's say because uh, uh, San Miguel was very famous uh, historically because of the independence movement, the conspiracy that took place here in the early 1800s. But then after the revolution of 1910, you know, it uh, went into a big, big recession, people moved out, and uh, then it was uh, reborn. So in the in the in the 30s and the 40s, with the arrival of uh, mainly Jose Mojica, uh, the blue fighter Pepe Ortiz, his wife Lupita Gallardo, who invited Jose Mojica to their wedding here in San Miguel. Mojica uh, met uh, Sterling in, in Oaxaca and told them about San Miguel. So Sterling went back to the United States together with uh, the friend that was traveling with him. They wrote a book about their trip, and then they uh, he came back and, and of course came to San Miguel. He loved it so much. He stayed here. Back in those days, my father was the governor of the state, and uh, so they uh, had had the idea of uh, taking advantage of San Miguel as far as all the crafts and all the art 
that uh, was San Miguel was famous for, you know, that went back to for centuries, you know, to pre-Hispanic times with all the uh, pottery, ceramics, uh, and when Spaniards arrived, they brought the wool, and so they started weaving and uh, all the uh, silver work, etc., etc. So San Miguel was full of craftsmen. You've been here almost all your life. All my life. All right. your life, yeah. I arrived here when I was six months old. So now, uh, Rudy is older or younger? He's younger. He's younger, okay. They, uh, so the Instituto was, uh, was operating as, a, as an art school here. Immediately, the Instituto was incorporated to the University of Guanajuato in 1951 and uh, started uh, giving, uh, uh, because of that incorporation, University, the state university, all well, the credits were official, recognized, and Sterling is cited uh, because of his uh, public relations in the United States, his family owning a very important advertising company in the U.S., Sterling's, Sterling's family. Uh, he knew people throughout the country, throughout the United States, in Canada. So he started writing letters to the New York Times, uh, the Chicago Daily News, uh, the uh, Dallas Morning, etc., etc., San Francisco, Los Angeles, Florida, Texas, uh, and, and uh, not only writing to the media, to the uh, uh, newspapers and magazines, they came and did uh, articles, uh, Life Magazine, uh, did one in uh, 1948, and then another one, uh, full color, you know, six uh, pages, something like that, with photographs, etc. In the 50s, the New York Times published several articles. So uh, not only that, but he also started inviting all these different schools. Uh, the most famous ones, the Rhode Island School of Design, the Chicago Art Institute, uh, San Francisco Art Institute, etc., etc. And they started uh, having these uh, programs, the studying abroad programs, and they sent uh, their students uh, and brought teachers, uh, or came, teachers came with them, and so they, uh, this, uh, knowledge, this uh, mixture of uh, talent, you know, from different parts of the world, uh, together with the San Miguel and Mexico talent, uh, made San Miguel unique. It, it really was. And also tourism started, uh, uh, cultural tourism, as we, as we say, uh, started uh, developing in San Miguel. And along with that came uh, restaurants. I remember my parents, uh, when they opened up the Instituto Hotel, they brought uh, the first chef that came, came to San Miguel from, uh, his name was uh, Aviles. He came from uh, Cuernavaca. Waiters that knew, you know, the fancy waiter. This was the hotel behind the Instituto. Behind the Instituto. So I'm very, very proud uh, of my parents and very lucky that I met all these people, famous people and all the political support that uh, San Miguel got because of my father's friends, uh, General Lázaro Cárdenas, uh, a letter signed by him congratulating my parents because of the founding of the Instituto and how it uh, developed the culture here, the art and the uh, tourism. So now you were the mayor of San Miguel from when to when? Uh, this was in 1995. Uh, oh, in, uh, that long ago? Yeah, 20 years ago. Wow. 20 years we're ago. We're getting old, honey. And, uh, so, uh, flies. but there were 1995, and San Miguel was, uh, uh, you know, I used to say that uh, you could come and sit in the Hardeen for 15 minutes and after after 10 years of not being here and you'd feel like you had never left because San Miguel stays so much the same even though now it's started to grow. I mean, it's growing 
something we need to watch out for because it's growing too much and we don't want uh, the uh, thing that happened in some cities in Europe or towns or villages that nobody lives there and now it's like a big uh, you know, mall, shopping mall. Right. Let me just go back a little bit uh, about the GI Bill. Uh, immediately, uh, Sterling uh, started working uh, to get the, the grants uh, for the GI Bill, which uh, he did even before the Instituto was founded, because there was an attempt to uh, start an art school that uh, was aborted, you know, uh, in the 1940s because of political reasons. But uh, this is when Chicagos and other people came uh, as well. But uh, back in those days, the, the GI Bill was authorized and, and again uh, restored in, uh, in the 50s. Uh, and it was Sterling that did all the, all the uh, uh, pushing and all the uh, uh, letters, etc., etc., to yeah, it was the requirements to have the GI Bills. And I don't know if you came on the GI Bill. Yeah, I did. I studied on the GI Bill. And I took classes with uh, in Mexican culture. I think was one of the classes that Sterling taught, and uh, they were. It was very interesting to be here at that time. Well, I remember those days very well because uh, we were very young. Yeah, I, and, uh, all I ever wanted to be was an art student. You know, I mean, at the Instituto Allende. I mean, what a beautiful place to be an art student. I remember when uh, they they. Um, had a two-tier uh, tuition program in, in an effort to bring in more Mexican students, uh, um, like they do in so many state colleges and universities in America, where if you're a resident, you your tuition is less, and that's the way it was at the Instituto at, the, at that time. Um, but anyway, so in 95, you became the mayor of uh, San Miguel. And that's a three-year uh, three uh, sentence, right? Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, what what do you remember uh, having accomplished in those three years? It was a very difficult time uh, financially. You know, uh, the federal government, and the state, and local government, their the economy wasn't good. Uh, I, I had experience also uh, because I was director of tourism for the state of Guanajuato. And of course, uh, you know, growing up at the Instituto, living there on, on, on the grounds uh, all my life, and, and knowing Sterling, and I uh, had a pretty good idea uh, as far as promotion and uh, advertising. So uh, first we organized as uh, director of tourism the first uh, campaign, media. Local government, state government, federal government, all to pitch in with something, and as far as uh, money, but also ideas. And we made a program to strengthen San Miguel as, uh, as an art center and as a tourist, worldwide uh, tourist destination. Uh, we tried to preserve, you know, cobblestone streets, our sidewalks, etc., etc. Uh, we. Uh, the image, you know, as far as the signs, you know, the signs all over the place hanging as, a, as a flags, you know, as we call it, bandera, you know, this way, so the size of them, etc. So we promoted with the Chamber of Commerce and the restaurants, uh, etc., to make them an adequate size and to put them on the wall and not to have them blocking all the views of the streets. Also, we, well, one important thing is we try to organize the, uh, uh, all the commercial uh, things that were happening that were out of order, like the Tianguis, the Martes, the Tuesday market. As you remember, it was in the San Juan de Dios area, blocking the streets, oh, it must have making been. it very, very unsafe because there are three or four schools, you know, with thousands of children attending. And I can't imagine, out. imagine living there on Tuesdays. Yes, and, and, uh, and not only that, uh, because they start setting up a day before and, and then take another day to clean up. And not only the garbage, but it was unsafe because, you know, they had gas tanks, because they had food uh, vendors, 
etc., etc. So it was very incisive. So it took two years to convince the uh, the, the people that the uh, the vendors and their syndicates, their, their unions, uh, to convince them to move and that uh, it would be uh, good for them, which uh, they're so happy now, it's, it's grown so much, you yeah. know, they choose the market and uh, they have parking areas, etc. And uh, it's a beautiful area now in San Juan de Dios. And like that, we started working in other areas to decentralize the cultural activities that took place around the main square, the Jardin, and, in, and back into the Instituto, you know, so all that was developed. But there were other areas of San Miguel that were sort of forgotten. So the idea when I was the mayor is to, if art, crafts, culture, history worked for San Miguel, why not take it to other parts of, of the city, of the town of San Miguel, but not only that, to rural communities as well. So we started the uh, uh, opening and the restoration of the um, archaeological site of La Cañada de la Virgen. We've uh, started working on uh, another project, which is the paleontology. It's very, very important on the north side of, of the municipality towards Dolores Hidalgo, the University of Mexico. National University of Mexico has been investigating there. They're taking out more than 20,000 fossils of uh, rhinoceros, camels, elephants. The the one of those skeleton. Old, one of the, those old circuses. The, the most uh, the the oldest skeleton of a dog that has been discovered in the world was discovered here. Here in San Miguel. Here in San Miguel. No kidding. And so just imagine all that. Uh, you know, like, a, and the idea was to to maintain the tourists here as, as long as possible. Unfortunately, the average back then was under two days, the, the average stay for tourists. Even considering all the people that came and stayed for months, uh, like people that came to study and stayed for months or for years, etc. The average? The average was under two days. Give the tourists something to do and something to say, to stay, and make a pleasant, good service, quality service, uh, he's gonna stay longer. And hotels are gonna grow, the occupancy, you know, the, the hotels, the demand for food, et cetera, et cetera, the taxis, the uh, uh, urban uh, transportation, building, which is so important in San Miguel, because so many tourists came, they liked it, and immediately they fell in love and they say, I want to buy a place and build a house. I want to buy a, a 18th century house and restore it. And this is what's kept the economy going. Yeah. So if we, if we keep the tourists here longer, and this, uh, you know, some people say, oh, you know, we don't like tourists. But the, the tourists, not only uh, are going to talk good about San Miguel but to, uh, and leave their money, but also they bring something, you know, their knowledge. All these people coming for, for the last six uh, decades or seven, the traditions of the customs have strengthened. It's not like they've gone down. They're more strong now than they were 50 years ago. Well, I, I keep saying, you know, when I first got to San Miguel, I, I, I fell in love at first sight it, from the Mirador up there looking down on San Miguel. I just fell in love. And today, when tourists walk into my gallery and we talk about San Miguel, I see the same light in their eyes that I had in my eyes back then. We are very proud of our history, of our architecture, of our culture, of our traditions. They come alive, and here, here we have uh, September, you know, not only Independence, but the day of San Miguel. Coming up. With yeah. all these dancers, you know, that come by thousands, you know, and they come from all over Mexico to uh, give a uh, tribute to the patron saint of San Miguel, you know. What year was the, was the cathedral built? The, the, the parroquia was built in, uh, well, originally in, in the 18th century, in the 1700s, but, but then uh, they, uh, some uh, priest 
Paris priest traveled to Europe, or, or, or I don't think he was a priest, but it was somebody that from San Miguel went to Europe, saw these magnificent uh, Gothic cathedrals. And they say it was the, the, the one in uh, Nicole, in Cologne, in, in, uh, in Germany. He sent a, a, a postcard to the priest here, and the, the priest liked it so much, he called in a mason from San Miguel, which are artists as well, and said, build this for me, you know, build this for San Miguel. I have fears that San Miguel is going to grow into another Carrera. We, I hope not. I hope not. And uh, this is uh, up to citizens, Mexicans, San Miguelenses, foreigners, architects, and also and mainly the government that has to local, federal, and state government. And now it's our World Heritage Site. A lot of the homes in San Miguel have been purchased by people that don't live here. You know, they come for two weeks out of the year or one month out of the year, and that's happening in a lot of beautiful places around the world because of the fact that there are people that have that kind of money. So you're a father of two? Uh, two beautiful girls. Uh, they are beautiful now married. <laughs> they are no, both married. They're both married now. They're both married. Oh, and, uh, well, I have a one-year-old uh, granddaughter, beautiful. One-year-old granddaughter. Yeah. Uh huh. And a beautiful wife. You know, she's an artist as well. She's uh, not a native of San Miguel, but she moved here when she was eight years old. Uh, Mexican. Where, where is she from? Well, she was originally born in Mexico City, but uh, then uh, she moved to, uh, her family had a big hacienda in the north part of the state of Guanajuato. And uh, on both of uh, her father's and mother's sides, also politicians and uh, revolution, on her mother's side, a revolutionary from uh, well, Her Sonora. father, Joaquin, right? Joaquin, yes. Uh -huh. Is he still alive? He passed away a couple of years ago. Oh, he did, I'm sorry. 94. Yeah. And so what are you up to these days? Well, uh, when my mother passed away, uh, my brother and I decided to, to separate uh, the uh, business and the property itself. And he kept on with the um, educational uh, program, incorporates the University of Guanajuato. And I started, uh, 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 well, uh, promoting uh, the property that uh, I kept uh, is a wedding uh, site, and uh, we we still have, as we did back then in the 70s, we started the art crafts shows that we had mainly to um, give the students an opportunity to show their their, their work and the professors, etc. I think I sold my first painting in one of those. So these are art uh, and craft shows that we have, and. Uh, we, we have several galleries, uh, one that we still, the oldest gallery in San Miguel, Galleria Pérgola, that uh, started in the 50s. Uh, I just remember it, it closed down for, back in the 1953. It's an art gallery. It was a space for the professors to show their work, and the students as well. And in 1953, uh, Rufino Tamayo came, and he was a good friend of my, my parents with Olga, he stayed here at, uh, and, uh, and worked at the Instituto for over six months, lectured and gave uh, workshops. He's, he's, still, he's still alive, isn't he? Uh, no, he, he also passed away, but he made this beautiful, it was commissioned by the Dallas uh, uh, Art Museum to make this beautiful, beautiful uh, mural. And he did it on campus and was transported to Dallas, and it's uh, about the main train, the Lombre. It's a very famous uh, uh, mural by Rufino Tamayo, who was made there on the Instituto grounds. There's uh, three or four galleries there at the Instituto. We have a cafe, and we have a, a restaurant that... Uh, Your daughter still run it? Uh, well, since they married, they sort of moved away and... Uh, Where are they living now? Uh, one in Canada and one in Mexico City. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, I can't imagine leaving San Miguel. Yeah. Weddings uh, first started becoming really big here. Yeah. 
I mean, because, but we, but now they are like yeah, uh, this is the place. You know? Very important. Yeah. We we had the first weddings uh, there at the Instituto. My my sister Barbara uh, married uh, my brother-in-law, Doctor in the 1950s, and uh, ever since then uh, we've had weddings. You know, at the, the instituto, on the, the main patio, you know, yeah, on, on the school side, and also at the hotel. So it's uh, something uh, we're proud to say we're we started with that as yeah. well. Yeah. Not not only the, the art and the education and the culture, but also the tourism. Uh, economically, culturally, artistically, uh, it's it's worked for San Miguel. Why not make San Miguel with a Mexican art museum? Why not make it the, the scenery of Mexican art to the world? I, I always mention as an example what happened in Bilbao, in Spain, when they established the Guggenheim Museum there. Within 15 years, now it's consolidated as an art and culture destination where before it was a big port, very important uh, commercial port in the city, industrial city, but it wasn't considered a, a tourist or cultural destination. We started the museum. Why not do that in San Miguel? It has the profile. It's an art center. Take advantage of the prestige of the Mexican artist, you know, worldwide known. Rufino Tamayo, Diego Rivera, you know what? Frida Kahlo. We got an art museum that uh, can show the production of the local artists and the, the production uh, of the uh, big Mexican uh, names as Frida, as, uh, Diego, uh, Siqueiros, Orozco. And uh, so people say, well, I want to see Mexican art. Go to San Miguel. There's the museum. And also make it educational. When you take all these kids that come to see Allende's house because of the history, take them into the museum, show them, show them what cubism is, what uh, impressionism is, etc., etc., and how by the production of the big Mexican names of artists. So that would be number one, number one project. If I could do something for San Miguel, I would do that.